VR chat worlds, a staple to the VR chat space, a place to forever stare into mirrors instead of actually meeting new people or doing productive things. Oh, and you want to create one? Okay, one like this, or you want to make a good one like this? All right, here's how. So, VR chat worlds can get extremely complicated. So we're going to break it down into some bite-sized pieces that hopefully you can understand. I'm going to be avoiding using base lighting. I will just be using the built-in real-time lighting just because in terms of generating different lightings and stuff like that, that could be a whole video. With that out of the way, let's carry on. Okay, so we're going to get started. We are assuming that you have the VR chat creator companion installed and unity installed and all set up. So what we're going to do is we're going to hop in, we're going to create a new project so now we're going to name the project pick the file location we're going to make it worlds and then we're going to select uh really all the packages i mean it doesn't really I'm matter i'm not going to select audio link because i don't do anything with that but you can if you want to and open it up once you open it up you'll be uh the screen will look kind of weird uh you really don't have to know all of this right now just kind of go with the flow and uh you'll start to understand it now we're actually going to import some packages so, I want you to go up here, click window, go down to package manager, open up that package manager. Oh yeah, don't forget to switch it to Unity Registry. And then we're going to search Pro, uh, and we're going to import Pro Grids and Pro Builder. Oh no, I, I don't see Pro Grids. Don't worry. So, just go up here to advance, and then click show preview packages, and then say yes. This will let you see pro grids. Uh, these are what we're going to use to build the world instead of Blender. It's just a bunch of modeling tools and pro grids just makes it so that these models snap to a grid so that we can get some accurate dimensions. All right, so if you don't see pro grids, you can click here and click pro grids window and then it will pop up. And if you want to use pro builder, you go and click pro builder window. You can drag that next to your hierarchy or really wherever you want. So in the pro builder window, we're going to click new shape, which will open up the shape tool, which lets you really change it to whatever primitive you want. You can pick the width, the length, you can change the segments in it. And then to make it physical, you click build. Now with a physical object like this plane, we can go about warping it however we like. Right here, we can click face, Move the face up and you see it warps the shape. So we're going to go over here and click the dots, which are vertices. And we can grab the vertices and move them however we want. I'm going to build out a rough shape of just something I think looks good. Uh, so I, I feel more comfortable when making my design. If you're wondering how I'm moving around like this, inside the scene view, you hold right click and then press WASD and you can move around. So you can see our plane isn't centered in the middle of the world. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the plane. Then we're going to go up to the transform. You can see it's not centered. We're going to right click it and we're going to click reset. And it will reset all the values to zero. As you can see with this cube because the plane is probably too big to notice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a capsule for reference. So I'm going to go over to the hierarchy and then I'm going to right click, click 3D object and click capsule. This will create a two meter capsule. We can use this capsule move around the scene to determine the height of things. All right, let's get started with actually making the house now. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to add another cube uh, for the walls. Then I'm going to use face select to actually stretch out the wall to make it longer. And then I can narrow it a little more and uh, then stretch you up so that you know it's a wall all right now we need our other wall so what we're going to do is we're going to click it press ctrl d and it duplicates it and now we want to go into object select which is the cube you can see we can drag it over so we can actually duplicate the wall again for our third wall and press r to rotate it or you can rotate using that button up in the left corner in order to snap in increments all you have to do is hold control while rotating pressing w will get you back to the move tool so you can move it around with just that knowledge we can make the rough shape of the house that we're going to be building things over here in the inspector uh, are kind of a mess now so what we're going to do is we're actually going to create a new game object we're going to rename it to like house this is like a folder we're then gonna well we're going to reset the transform so it's not in a random place in the world then we're going to grab all of our walls we're just going to drag it and drop it in and uh as you can see we can now move the entire house as one solid piece all right let's learn how to cut out of the actual object so what we're going to do is we're going to select the object we want we're going to go to edge select mode and then we're going to click an edge that we want to put a line perpendicular through all right we're going to select insert edge loop you have to do this in edge select mode if you're not in edge select mode it won't pop up 
this creates a loop around the entire object that you can move around. So we're going to move in a place for a door. Then we're going to make another edge loop and we're going to connect them using the connect edges button on both sides. Shift and then click to uh, select multiple edges. We're going to make sure that they're aligned together so that whenever we extrude out, it won't cause like overlapping issues. To extrude, we're going to go face select mode, hold shift, move the face in. You can then select the face and press delete and it will delete it. But you can see there's overlapping issues on it. So we're going to click on it, delete that. And there's a face on the bottom. So make sure you delete that one too. And also one on the front side. So you delete the three faces and then well you've got a door well <laughs> that's not what i want going on if you go to vertex select mode you can see that there's a uh there's a hole so these vertices aren't connected so what we're going to do is we're going to select everything by pressing Control a we're going to click weld vertices and then we're going to just select weld vertices you can see it's connected now that's good now we have a solid door so now I'm just defining where I want the door and I'm gonna add some more edge loops and some things like that just just to give the door a little bit more depth because of the theme that I'm going for. And the world's boring. So what I wanna do is add some material. So to do that, we're gonna go to our assets, right click, create, we're gonna click material. We can name it whatever we want. I'm gonna go for grass because it's gonna be green uh, for, for my grass. And then with the material selected, you can go into the inspector, click on this albedo and change the color to whatever you want. I can drop that on and then you can mess around with these values. See, I'm gonna turn the smoothness down so it looks more matte. You can turn up the metallic of it and give it a shine, but I'm just gonna turn it all the way down. So that just this nice green material. Now I can go about making the roof for uh, my little house. So it's basically everything that we've already done before. You can move it around, duplicate it, flip it. And I know your OCD will drive you crazy, but it doesn't have to be perfect and parts can overlap. It drove me insane the first time I, I I did it like i wanted everything to be perfect it won't be perfect trust me all right so with that in mind i just keep on doing everything else and uh i decided to add an extra room because this kind of just looks like a church so i copy the roof put it off to the side you know and then add some walls and cut a hole out so that there's a space in the room and then i hide those extruding parts with another big block and as you can see this is the rough outline the rough shape of what the building would be now we're going to add some more depth elements to the building to give it more of a shape and look less flat so with adding the depth i added some border pieces that went around the entire house and some pillars on the side you know the depth effect by actually adding depth <laughs> yeah you know how it is i added a porch and a floor to the house and uh some fences a new door off to the side so this could be like a little little area that you do like farming something on it you know and some steps lastly i added tiles on the roof which i used this primitive piece this arch stretched it out and it looked just like a what is this a porcelain tile yeah placed it on the roof and uh copied it pasted it down copy it pasted it down and then took those pasted them over moved them up or down a little bit to give it a little bit of the, the uh, uh, uh staggered look and i think it looks great so you want to play test your world there's two ways you can do this. The first one is up here in the top middle. You click play. It'll load in. And then you can walk around the world and check the size relative to you. You can also build and test the world using the VR chat SDK up in the top left. You go to control panel, show control panel. Then you sign in and go to builder. And here you can do build and test. And this shows you how it works inside of VR chat. Now we just need some materials to bring it all together. But I don't want to do these base materials. What I'm going to do is I'm going to download some. All assets I downloaded will be in the description. So don't worry if you want to use them. So I went to the Unity Asset Store. Typed in to get some hand-painted materials. And then I also downloaded some low-poly assets. And some medieval-style uh, housing. Uh, all of these are just sorted by free assets. And you click to add them to your assets. You can just open them up inside of Unity over in the Package Manager. You just go My Assets. And then you can import all 
problem them, it'll import the materials, which we can use for other items too. If import is grayed out, you have to download it first, then import it. If you don't see any of them, press that refresh button and it will refresh your assets. By the time I was done, I went from something that looked like this to something that looked like this. So let's go over all the problems you might end up having while trying to add materials to your objects. So say I want to add this really cool looking wood texture to this object. Yeah, that doesn't look so right. So let's fix this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into object select mode and then I'm going to select the object. And on the left hand side in Pro Builder, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pick UV editor. What the UV editor does is it basically takes your model, which you think of it as a cardboard box and unfolds it into its base components. So what I want to do is I'm going to select base select mode in the UV editor, select all of them, and then I'm going to scale it down using that button up in the top left corner. It's the scale button. Scale it down to a reasonable size until it's uh, it looks decent sized on the texture. Then I'm going to go back to the transform form or the move tool and i'm going to move it onto the texture so that it looks right i'm then going to select the bottom two faces which i want to be like the end of a post and i'm going to move them over to the part of the texture that has that face on it you can see that some of the faces aren't on the material it ends up repeating it will repeat infinitely so even though it's grayed out right there it's still actually there and they're separated for the reason of baking lights which i'm not gonna do so if if y'all want to worry about separating them, you can't. But I'm not worrying about that. But now you have a finished texture that has the post on both sides and still looks good when you wrap around it. You're probably gonna have to do a lot of these in the scene, so I recommend doing this before you duplicate them and build it out so you don't have to do what I do, which was do it for all of them. If you did have to do it for all of them, one, I'm sorry. Two, you're welcome, because you'll never forget. For materials on the inside, like the floor, that don't need to be remade, Mapped. what you can do is you can actually change the tiling on them and you can set them in different sizes to uh stretch the texture across the object you could do this in the uv editor but it's not always necessary this is just a different way of doing it let's step away for the second because the background's just great so i'm going to add a skybox to it and i actually have this asset that includes a physical dump so instead of it just being a texture it's all physical so i did that one instead and i added a few physical Cool clouds that just set up in the sky and look pretty. All right, with that dome out of the way and the skybox just looking absolutely dapper, for these materials, I want to make them pop more. The best way to do that is to add some shaders. So, knowing of one specific shader that allows for a lot of customization and is optimized for VR chat, <coughs> Poyomi. So, I'm going to go to Poyomi and access their GitHub website and then go and download the Unity package from it. You can just drag and drop that in like everything else. So you can select the object that has the material on it. You go to the material. You see then, where it says shader? Yeah. Click that. Go to Poyomi. And then Poyomi World. Because get it? VRChat World. In here, you can really mess around with whatever you want. I usually just change the colors, the darkness, saturation, stuff like that. Just a tiny bit. I, I don't like doing too much. But this has a whole list of capabilities. So just mess around with it however you want. Remember, Control Z is how you go back. Since I have it outside to the house, I kind of want to change it from this green plane to a terrain. So we'll go from this to this. You got to trust the process because it doesn't look good at first and as you're making your way through but by the end it will look amazing all right beginning let's add a terrain to our scene we'll do that by going to the hierarchy right click and clicking terrain now the inspector is going to look weird because we're going to have a whole bunch of terrain tools here that will help us shape it and paint on it and add stuff to it so let's get started with that if you open up the terrain settings tab, you can change different things about the terrain. So first, we're gonna go over to this tab and we're gonna raise or lower the terrain. It's like a paintbrush. So you can select which of your brushes you want and then you click to raise the terrain. You can change the brush size, the opacity, and the shape of the brush. You can also use shift click to lower the terrain. Now just make your desired shape. 
after you have what you want we're going to go over to the paint terrain side and we're then going to click add new in the terrain layers and we're going to pick a texture to set as the base grass when we click it you can see the entire terrain turns to that color then we're going to add another one for different things that we want to paint on like dirt or worn areas and this tool is the same as the race terrain tool except all you're doing is painting instead of razoring or lowering it so to change between the different textures you want to paint just click on that texture now break free and make some pathways or some muddy areas or something and we're going to go to adding trees and grass next all right when adding trees and grass we're going to go over to the paint trees icon we're going to click add tree and then we'll click the plus next to this game object or in your assets you can search up the game object and just drag and drop into that spot but i'm gonna i'm gonna pick this birch and then add it if you click on it the density and the brush size shows how many trees get placed in that area you can also mass place the trees if they aren't where you like them you can hold shift and remove them so go ahead and do that real quick last we we go to the paint details little icon and this is where we can add grass click the edit details and click the add grass texture then you can just click on the texture you want and i'm just going to search grass and add a grass texture i already have now it's literally the same as everything else you can just paint it on and change the amount of grass you want in a certain area all right let's start adding prefabs to the scene to give it more depth to give it a few more objects and uh really decorate the area we're also gonna add some vrc based prefabs from the vrc prefabs database which is its own website you can actually go to and it's a whole bunch of prefabs just set up right there for you bunch of tools bunch of everything most of them are just uni packages which you already know how to import so just go around adding what you like to it some of them can be a little more difficult to set up than other ones whoa the inside looks insane now i've got a pool table i've got a mirror a toggleable mirror and some other uh torches i just set around and stuff like that so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the VR World Toolkit up here in the top left. I'm going to go down to Quick Functions and click Mass Texture Importer. What this does is it crunches the texture of an object down to a manageable size. So what I do is I go, I leave most things default. What I'm going to do is go Max Size, change that either to 124 or 512 i usually do 512 i'm going to override when bigger than i will use crunch compression i do that 80 percent you can change it to whatever you like i just i just leave it there i will override when bigger than don't override when already enabled cube map smaller than ignore when it's smaller than my max size and then you can get the assets either from your scene or from the assets i suggest just doing it all so you don't have to worry about assets that you add in later and after you do that you can click apply all right let's have one of the world now you go to vr chat sdk you can name it give it a description pick the max capacity and the recommended capacity then we're just going to go down if it asks you to auto fix anything you can just select auto fix and it should do it for you now we're going to open up the build we're going to say yes the information is accurate and then uh we're going to make sure we're windows and we're going to click build build and upload and that will build the project for us and then upload it to vr chat after it's uploaded we can publish it to the community labs which is basically just a place for new worlds and stuff like that now where it says selected platform we're going to go down and we're going to click windows and then we're going to switch it to android this way it will be uploaded to quest once it finishes switching to android you just auto fix everything that it tells you auto fix and then you're good you just confirm that it's you and upload it now we can hop over into vr chat you go to my worlds uploaded and you can see your world should be there so join the world real quick and now you have your whole own beautiful world in vr chat and these are just the basics there's so much more you can do all right bye